Hello, I'm Dr. Sandra Freihofer, liaison to ACIP, the CDC's Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices. Welcome to the American College of Physicians 2024 Adult Immunization Video Series. The topic, COVID vaccination for adults. Let's start with the bottom line. A dose of the new updated COVID vaccine is recommended for everyone six months and older. This is a universal recommendation, just like the one we have for flu. Now you may have wondered, what should we call it? We all have booster fatigue. The messaging has changed. The official name for this new XBB.1.5 monovalent version is the 2023-2024 COVID vaccine, or just call it the updated COVID vaccine. FDA anticipates the composition of COVID vaccines may need an update each year, just like we already do for flu. To review, everyone six months and older can and should get a dose. And for those age five and older, a single dose of the updated vaccine is all you need to be up to date. Regardless of previous vaccination status, and even if you've never had any previous COVID vaccinations, this is because everyone age five and older is thought to have at least some immunity to COVID from vaccines, from previous infection, or both. Younger children, those under five, may end up getting more than one updated dose if they haven't finished their initial multi-dose prime. Those with immunocompromising conditions need at least one updated shot as part of or in addition to a three mRNA dose prime. They can get additional doses of the updated vaccine if their physician recommends it. The 2024 adult schedule specifies any further additional doses should be administered at least two months after the last updated COVID vaccine dose. Look for more to come about additional doses for other high-risk groups. So that's for mRNA vaccines. People age 12 and older have another choice for boosting their COVID protection. An updated version of the Novavax protein-based adjuvanted COVID vaccine is authorized under emergency use, but only for those age 12 and older. For those previously vaccinated, only a single Novavax dose is needed. Those not previously vaccinated will need two Novavax doses. Those with immunocompromising conditions may receive additional doses if recommended by their physician. So now we have two updated COVID vaccine platforms to choose from and details of exactly what your patient needs depends on which and how many vaccine doses your patients already received and their immune status. CDC has put together some colorful and informative infographics that go through every possible permutation. As for timing, the new vaccine can be given at least two months after your last COVID vaccine dose for both mRNA and protein-based adjuvanted versions. But if you recently had COVID, you can wait at least three months after infection to get the new updated vaccine. Studies have shown an increased time between infection and vaccination might improve immune response to vaccination. But if you don't wanna wait, you don't have to. You can get an updated dose as soon as you've recovered from your acute illness and out of isolation. These vaccines are effective and safe. The benefit risk profile for COVID vaccines is favorable. Their continued safety is being constantly monitored. Side effects are similar to previous COVID vaccines. Post authorization studies have shown anaphylaxis events are rare. Risk of myocarditis following any COVID vaccine is rare, but real, especially for young males aged 12 to 39. Rates are highest for males aged 12 to 17 years old. Extending the interval between the first and second vaccine doses may reduce myocarditis risk. But understand, COVID infection can also cause myocarditis, and the risk of adverse cardiac outcomes was 1.8 to 5.6 times higher after COVID infection than after COVID vaccination among males aged 12 to 17. ACIP has thoroughly reviewed available data. There's accumulating evidence that vaccination reduces risk of long COVID in both children and in adults. Even at age groups in which there's an increased risk of myocarditis, including young males, the benefits of vaccination outweigh the risk. We know this virus keeps mutating and will the updated vaccine protects against circulating COVID strains? Vaccine manufacturers say it should, so does FDA. 
FDA has gone on record that studies suggest the vaccines are a good match for protecting against circulating strains, which are XBB descendants. This applies to those with no prior infection, as well as those previously infected. So what about co-administration? Can you give COVID vaccines with other vaccines? CDC says, yes, you can. The updated COVID vaccine can be co-administered with other vaccines, including flu shots and the new RSV vaccines. However, there's an additional consideration before given COVID vaccines with MPOX vaccines, a hypothetical risk of myocarditis with the Genius vaccine. People who are recommended to receive both vaccines, particularly adolescent and young adult males, should consider waiting four weeks between getting them. However, CDC says if a patient's risk for MPOX or severe disease due to COVID is increased, administration of both vaccines should not be delayed. So what about coverage and cost? COVID vaccines are now sold commercially. The federal government's no longer footing the bill. COVID vaccines are listed on ACIP immunization schedules. They're covered by ACA compliant insurance plans. What's more, Section 3203 of the CARES Act expedites insurance coverage specifically for COVID vaccines. It mandates coverage without cost sharing as of January 5, 2021, once a COVID vaccine is FDA authorized or approved, and these are. COVID vaccines are now covered by Medicare and Medicaid. But what about the 25 to 30 million uninsured and underinsured adults age 18 to 64? They're left out. To fill this gap, CDC has put together a bridge access program for COVID vaccines and treatments. This program makes vaccines available through public health departments and retail pharmacies, including CVS, Walgreens, and also through E True North, a pharmacy aggregator that subcontracts with smaller pharmacies. For COVID, things are not as bad as they had been. But still, each week, we're seeing thousands of hospitalizations and hundreds of deaths due to COVID. We know adults 65 and older and those with multiple underlying conditions are at greatest risk of severe outcomes if they get COVID. We know children aged 5 to 17 are less likely to suffer severe illness. Still, hundreds of children in this age group died from COVID in 2021 and 2022. And half of the children who died had no underlying conditions. There is no group that clearly has no risk from COVID. Even children and adults with no underlying conditions can still experience severe illness due to COVID. That's why ACIP supported a universal recommendation for the updated COVID vaccine. Everyone six months and older needs a dose of the updated COVID vaccine. New variants have emerged. Vaccine and infection-induced immunity is beginning to wane. This new vaccine will increase our immune response against circulating variants. This new vaccine will help protect us from COVID. Our challenge now is to get vaccine into arms. For the American College of Physicians, I'm Dr. Sandra Freyhofer.